We have these stories that happened a long time ago, and they come from animals. They're really interesting stories. And in Lakota homeland, there's an animal called a prairie dog. In Lakota, we say bispiza. Bispiza, they're really good to eat. They really taste good. Anyway, before people came on the earth, these prairie dogs, they were really a, a happy people. They're just full of energy and boy, they like to play. For those of you that know what a prairie dog town is, then you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that don't know, there's these places out in the prairie where these prairie dogs, they have like a village. So there's a bunch of holes in the ground in this area, and that's where they live. It's like a town. That's why they call it Otuan Happy Spiza. <laughs> that's the prairie dog town. And when you go by them during the evening time, they're always standing up on their two hind legs. They're standing straight up, and they're looking around, always scanning the prairie, the horizon. They're always scanning like that. Then they they run, they run to another hole. Then they go in there. Then they come out and they look around again. It's like they're like they're playing, and they seem to always be in a cheerful mood. The way they do this, the other animals they would say that the prairie dogs are dancing. This is the way they dance, and one day they stopped doing that. They just were not coming out at all. They just stayed inside their homes and they didn't come out. So the other animals were wondering, well, what's going on here? So one time the prairie dogs were standing outside their, their homes. It was around evening time. And an owl came. And the owl said, how come you guys don't dance anymore? He said, you guys should be dancing because it really makes you feel good. And they didn't do anything. So he decided to try to say something to psych them up. So he said, one time I went into the woods, and all I said was a few words. And my enemies were hiding, and they heard my words, and they got scared, and they ran away. And that's how brave I am. And they said, hoo, hoo, and they heard the owl, and they took off running. I'll explain why a little bit later. So they got scared just hearing it, hearing his voice. And this is called wakte oglake. This is when you make a speech to fire the people up. You know what I mean? To psych them up. To get them feeling good again. So that's why he made the speech. After he said this, the prairie dogs, they still didn't dance. They still were staying there. They didn't do anything. So then a badger came into the area. And he, he said, why aren't you guys dancing? And they didn't say anything. So then he decided to make a wakte ogalake too, like the owl. The badger said, my friend, the owl has made a really good wakte ogalake. Now I will do one. Maybe after you hear mine, maybe you'll dance again. He said, during the day, two enemies tried to kill me with their spears. But I jumped towards them really fast and I scared the crap out of them. And they ran away. Yeah, He's, They really were shocked and they turned around and ran away. So I continued to live another day. That's just how brave I am. And still the prairie dogs didn't dance. So next a skunk walked in. And the skunk said, my two friends, they really spoke well. And still you don't dance. So I'm going to speak to you next. He said, one day I was walking through some bushes. And my enemies heard me. When they found me, they took one look at me and they turned around and ran away screaming in terror. This is how brave I am. And when the skunk finished his wakteogilake, the prairie dog still didn't dance. So next, the rabbit and the red fox walked into the area. And the rabbit said, my three friends... The owl and the badger and the skunk, they all spoke good. But still, you don't dance, so I will speak to you. Maybe you'll dance after this. So then he continued. One day, I saw some of my enemies traveling nearby. I hid under the sage bush, 
And when my enemies were close, I jumped up in front of them and surprised them. They tried to kill me, but I ran so fast they couldn't catch me. Jackrabbits, this is the kind of rabbits that live on the prairie. They're really fast. They hop at the same time. And they're really fast. And they couldn't catch him. And he said, this is how brave I am. And then still, prairie dogs didn't dance. So then a prairie chicken walked into the crowd. And he said, my four friends have spoken well, but you still don't dance. So then may I will speak. The prairie chicken said, I was walking along, and my enemy saw me and shot arrows at me. Only one arrow hit me, but I was still able to escape. I laid down for a time until the meat on my back wasted away and the arrow fell out. This is why I am bony on my back. I was shot, but I withstood the pain, and today I am still alive. This is how brave I am. So it's like when you go through difficulties, and he still lives through it. And still, the prairie dogs didn't dance. So finally, a buffalo came walking into the crowd. And he had a bundle on his back. And the buffalo said, My five friends have spoken well, but still you don't dance. Then, therefore, I will speak to you. I was walking along a hillside one day, and some people saw me. A large group gathered in a circle around me, and all day long they shot arrows at me until they ran out of arrows. When they saw that I would not die, they left me alone. I laid there with many arrows stuck in me. After a while, the arrows slowly slipped out, and I was healed. I gathered all the arrows that were stuck in me, and I tied them in the bundle, and this is the bundle that I'm carrying on my back. This is how brave I am. And still... The prairie dogs didn't dance. After six speeches, they didn't dance. So these animals, they started to meet with each other. The buffalo, the prairie chicken, a rabbit, and a fox functioning as one group, a skunk, a badger, and an owl. So these animals, they met together and they were saying, hmm, what should we do? How can we make these people dance? So... They decided to say, let's start warrior societies. Maybe this will help. So then the buffalo said he would make a society for the old men and that he would be their representative. This would be called the chief's society. The old chiefs are in this group. And they were to make the decisions concerning the government, uh, the people. And they would have feasts so that the people would feel good. So you see, there was not one chief of a tribe. It was a council of chiefs, not just one. The next was a prairie chicken. He said he would start a society, and he would be a representative, and they would be called Bravehearts, and that this would be a society for courageous warriors. They would be like the soldiers, the army, you could say. The next society uh, was the rabbit and the the fox. They came forward and they said that they would create a society too. Theirs would be called Kit Fox Society. And their symbol would be the rabbit, the society. It's called Kit Fox Society, but the rabbit is the representative. And these are soldiers too, but they would also be scouts. They go up ahead to see what's going on. They're known for their cunning they're really smart then the skunk came forward and he said he would also start a society and he would be the representative of it and the members of this society would be so fierce these are the really fierce warriors that all it takes is a one look the enemy sees this kind of a warrior and the enemy just turns away just like you do when you see a skunk when you see a skunk the first instinct is to get the hell out of there yeah you don't want to get sprayed because that's not going to come off for a while (laughs) yeah and so this is why they have that appearance too and this society would be called kanri yuha kanri is a crow the bird crow not the crow indians okay and the fiercest warriors are going to be in this society these are the warriors who fight to the death. They're known for their fierceness in battle 
And when the enemies see them, they get out of the way because they know they're going to lose. They have a special fighting skill that takes a lot of people to bring one down. So they're really known for their fierceness. This is Kanjiyuha. Then the badger came forward and he said he would start a society too and he would be the representative of it. And the warriors that would be in here would, would have energy like the badger. And they would be called the Badger Society. And finally, the owl came forward. And he said he's going to start a society. And his society is going to be made up of men who are known for their wisdom. And his society would be called Owl Feather Headdress Society. These people are, are known for their wisdom. These are the smart people. They really can think with their hearts. So they use the mind and the heart together. These are really uh, exceptional men here. So they have six warrior societies now. And so after they presented their idea to the prairie dogs, the prairie dogs really liked that. So they started to dance again. Those other animals after they they made all these speeches and stuff that made the prairie dogs feel really good. So they started dancing again. And they started to feel good again. And so they always say that when a prairie dog is standing up, he's making a speech. So he's like saying, yeah, the uh, enemy tried to kill me, but I was smarter than him. And I stood up like this. And the enemy thought I was a a tree. So he just walked on by. That's how brave I am. Then he ran really fast to uh, one of the other prairie dog holes. And the other other, uh, animals cheer him on. And there's always an owl that's sitting nearby. And the owl is saying, tiki, 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 like that. As this prairie dog is running. And so this was what was happening on the earth so when people come on the earth they learn this from the animals and so we do the same thing our ancient society did the same thing so we organized into six warrior societies too just like these animals did and that's what kept us organized that's what kept us in a community way of thinking and when warriors would make speeches, the speech was never meant to brag about himself. They speak in such a way so that the people will think, we have good warriors. So we know we will always be protected. We will always be taken care of. We'll be fed because they're going to do buffalo hunts. They're going to always watch over us. So the reason why the warriors make these speeches is to make the people feel confident. Because remember, they're community-thinking people. Not like today. Today, Indians are just like everybody else. Today, Indians are not community thinkers anymore. The reason is Christian brainwashing. So now we lost this. And that's, that's unfortunate. And there's one more thing, too, is that when the humans come on the earth, they observe the buffalo, and they notice that the buffalo organize themselves in a certain way. And it really was beautiful. So the people said, let's do that, too. Let's organize like the buffaloes, because it makes everybody important, that everybody counts. That nobody is greater than anybody else. And that we all have a job to do. We all have a talent. And that we use that talent for the people so that the people may live. It always comes down to that. So that the people may live. To think like a community. And the way the buffalo organize themselves is called teoshpaye. And that's what we do too. This is a teoshpaye. Your mother and all her sisters are all your mothers. And all the husbands or partners of these women 
are your fathers. And all these mothers are just as important as the one that you were born from. The same thing with the fathers. They're all equally important. The children from all your mothers and fathers are all your brothers and sisters. Now your mother's brothers are your uncles. And their wives are your aunties and their children are their cousins. So you call each other by, you either say older brother, younger brother, oldest sister, younger sister. Those are the terms you use. You, they never use names. You had a name, but you, you didn't use it for this purpose. When you talk to each other and you say, Oh, Jephanshi. Or, Oh, Shicheshi. Oh, Hankashi. Oh, Misun. All these kinship terms. You use those instead. That was the original way. So when Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse talk to each other, they, Sitting Bull never said, Hey, Crazy Horse, how are you? He never said that. Yeah? Instead, Crazy Horse would say, Lexi, Uncle, it's really good to see you. That's how he talked to him. He never said Sitting Bull. He said, uncle. Even though they weren't related. You use kinship terms. When you're talking about people that you're not related to, if they're the same generation as you, you use the cousin terms. If there's a generation of your parents, you use the auntie and uncle terms. If they're the same generation as your children, you use niece and nephew terms. That's how it works. When you're not related to people, you still address them as a relative anyway. And that makes people feel good. Let me continue with this Tioshpa thing. On your father's side, your father and his brothers are all your fathers. And the wives of these men are all your other mothers. And the children from these marriages are your brothers and sisters. Your father's sister are your other aunties. And their husbands are your other uncles, and their children are your other cousins. So you have a lot of moms and dads on both sides. And they're all equally important as the one you're born from. And they can all discipline you at any time when you're messing up. But the thing is, when you're a young child, they really watch you, and they try to find out what your talent is. Because it wasn't just men who had societies, women had societies too. And there were even women warrior societies in the Lakota way. This is in our oral history. We're one of the few tribes that had that in America. They went to war too. They went on buffalo hunts too. They're very, very powerful people too. See, Lakota people, we're we're not matriarchal, but we're not patriarchal either. We're something different. We're that third thing. Lakota Star Knowledge teaches that there's at least three perspectives to everything. Not just two, but at least three, sometimes more than three. Most of the times, it's more than three. It's not about which is good and which is bad. It's not like that at all. It's what can I learn from it. Or what can it learn from me? Or maybe it's a blessing. Or maybe it's just peace. Which you take the time to find out, as I explained earlier. So if somebody tells you that Lakota people were matriarchal, that's bullshit. That's a total lie. No, we're not. But we're not patriarchal either. We're something different. When somebody says that we're matriarchal, that's proof to you that today's Indians are not the same as our ancestors, that we are dualistic now, today too. That's why we think like that. But our ancestors were not dualistic, so that's why you could see that there was a third option. And that's what we were. So, when you're a little kid, this um, the adults really watch you to find out what your talents are. And as soon as they know what your talent is, then you're sent to that particular society that focuses on that. So you're raised to use your talent 
for the people. Maybe some little boys, they can see he's going to be a good hunter. So that's what they train him as. Maybe another boy is just really smart. So he's heading for that society that's known for wisdom. As some girl, they have their societies like this too. So the women watch the girls. And the girls who are good thinkers, they're going to go to their woman society that has that. Some of them might be good cooks. They're going to go to that society. There might even be boys that are, might be good cooks. They're going to go to that same society too. So you're raised to develop your talent, but you're taught to use your talent so that the people may live. So you did what you're good at for the people. You never did it to say, this is what makes me better. Do you see what I mean? Because that's dualistic thinking. So in this kind of society, you're nurtured from a very young age to become a community thinker. And you see the results. It makes you feel good when you do something nice for somebody. And you see how thankful they are. And it makes you feel good too. It makes you want to do that some more. They learned this as little children. So by the time they're adults, this is their way of life. Because that's what Lakota means. Friendship, allies. Even the word Lakota comes from the word kola. It's a really advanced kind of conjugating process where that happens. But like I said, children are experiencing many things as they're growing up. And they also become emotionally developed. They learn how to handle difficulties. They learn how to have a good time. And so they are becoming emotionally developed at the same time as they're learning. So by the time they're adults, they are emotionally developed, young people. Today, we're underdeveloped emotionally because of this thing that happened on the reservation, the Christianity, brainwashing, and then the boarding school experience. All of that is what stopped our emotional development as a nation. So now we're like everybody else in this modern world. So it's not enough to just know things. You have to be emotionally developed. That's really important. So being emotionally developed allows them to become spiritually developed. They've developed the talents. They're using it for the people. And you see how things work and that when you are healthy, that society is healthy. And children want to do good things because they see what it does. So they learn to want to do good things for others. And they see the benefits that everybody feels good. And then they learn this natural law of generosity. What this is is that the energy in the things you say and do and how you say and how you do these things, that it comes back to you four times as strong. So if you're selfish and you do things begrudgingly, that's unhealthy. And that's going to come back stronger, unhealthier. They learn that. These children learn that in the ancient times. So that's why they're really, really wonderful people by the time they become adults. (laughs) But see, they're thinking like a community because they see it all the time. That's the first thing they witness when they, as they start to develop memories and as they learn to speak. And it's in the language too. The community way of thinking is in the language as well. So if they say something like, what that means is when we speak Lakota, it's good. So there's a certain aspect of this sentence that encourages you. It makes you feel good. And so the language is showing the custom of generosity. The language is reflecting this concept that I just explained. 
So when somebody says, He honey wash there, this is not good. That means good morning. But we never said he honey wash there. Because it doesn't reflect the community way of thinking. The more correct way to say that would be something like he honey kile lila dayan wachion kelo or wachion ke for women. Guys say wachion kelo, that means I see you. Women say wachion ke. And the sentence that means it's really good to see you this morning. Do you see what I mean? The words embrace you. So you don't just say he honey wash there. When Lakota people say he honey wash there, that is my proof to you that we are not like our ancestors because our ancestors never said that. That's speaking Lakota with the English language perspective. And that's incorrect. I never heard my mother say he honey wash there. My father never said that. Lakota was their first language. My grandparents never said that. Instead they say that's really good to see you this morning or I'm happy to see you this morning. See, the sentence is embracing the listener. You don't just say he honey wash there. If somebody says he honey wash there to a fluent speaker, the fluent speaker is going to think that you're cold hearted, that you don't really want to talk to that person. Even if you're standing there smiling, they might think, huh, that's suspicious here. He's smiling, but he's talking different. You see what I mean? You have to speak Lakota from the Lakota perspective, not the English language perspective. That's the problem today on the reservations. Lakota teachers are speaking from the English language perspective. That's what I don't like. You see what I mean? That shows you that our people are are not like our ancestors, that we're not community thinkers anymore. If we were community thinkers, our teachers would be teaching instead of just is not a good thing to say. Even if you mean it, it's not a good thing to say. So you see that on the internet. A lot of Lakota people are saying that. He honey watch that. That's not right. That's not correct. Because it's not reflecting the Lakota perspective. It's reflecting the English language perspective. But Lakota people today don't seem to care. They say it anyway. So that shows to you that we don't have our original way anymore. But my students do. (laughs) <laughs> they say he honikile ilatan wa chiyongke lo or wa chiyongke. My students are learning the Lakota perspective. So they have the community way of thinking. I'm teaching it to them. See, when you teach the language, you have to teach the culture too. It's just the way it is. Every language is that way. So, in the Teoshpae, you're developing mature and emotionally and your talents are developing, you use them for the people, you think like a community, and uh, when somebody messes up, people come around and straighten that person up immediately. Maybe even their own peers. Like if a boy is screwing around, other boys might come up to him and say, you stop that. This is upsetting the people. And they'll put him in his place really fast so he stops that's the kind of society our ancestors had so parenting was part of the society it was in everything and you weren't just parented by your biological mom and dad look at all the moms and dads I'd explain to you in the Teoshpa they all parent you and there's always exceptions too. Sometimes maybe, you know, maybe your mom is the only girl in her family. So her cousins might step in and act as your mothers too. You see what I mean? Sometimes it works like that. 
So you're being loved and disciplined by many, many adults. That was how parenting was back in those days. And today, we don't have that anymore. So today, maybe our kid is walking downtown and is knocking over trash cans. Then maybe your brother sees your son doing that. So your brother gives you a call and says, Hey, your son is knocking trash cans down on Main Street. So you say, Thank you for telling me that. So you go down and find your son and say, Hey, you knocked that off. That's how it's done today. But how should it have been done in the traditional way? See, in the Teoshpai, the the boy's father and his father's brothers are all his fathers. In the old way, the father's brother, if he saw this boy knocking down trash cans on the street, he would go right up to the boy and say, you knock that off right now. And he has every right to say that. Because in the Teosh by a way, that's his son too. You see what I mean now? that any of these mothers and fathers in a teoshpaya can discipline you immediately. And when you're brought up in a community way of thinking, you obey. You know that you have to listen. You know that you better stop because you're taught to be a community thinker. I think the world could really benefit from that today. This is not from the Lakota people. This is from the Buffalo people. Do you see what I mean? This is why in the Lakota way, animals are not just animals. Animals are nations. We've received medicine from animals. We've received knowledge. Our society comes from animals. Because it worked for them for Millions of years before we came on the earth. You see what I mean? So, think about that. When you see a buffalo, or when you see a bird, they all have an organization. It works. And that's why we used it too. We got our familial system from the buffalo, because it works. And it perpetuates encourages everyone to think from a community perspective. And being in a community perspective, that doesn't mean you say yes to everything. It means that you have to know when to say no. When somebody asks you to do something that's not really going to benefit the people, you have to say no. I can't do that. It only benefits you. And if it's a selfish thing, Because sometimes it might be, you know, that guy might say, hey, my pants, they split. I hate to walk back to my teepee because uh, I'm going to look funny just wearing a a shirt. So could you get me some pants? (laughs) That's a good thing, yeah? (laughs) That's not selfish. (laughs) So, So anyway... That's how it was in ancient times. In a Teoshpai, all fathers and all mothers are obligated to discipline that child when that child messes up. Because that child has been taught by many people how to live. So when the child messes up, this child is putting down all those teachers that have taught him from the men's or women's society he's from, to all his mothers, to all his fathers. When a child messes up, he's really insulting a lot of people here. It's not just mom, not just dad, but a whole bunch of people. And any one of these people can discipline him. And it's accepted. Because that's how we were raised. It would be good if we had something like that again today. And we have to have these kind of organizations again. So today, we're like the prairie dogs in the beginning of that story. Today, we're just standing around. Today, we're selfish. Today, we 
We only care about our own. We don't care about our community anymore. We just care about our own, our own relatives. We don't think in the Teoshvaya way anymore. So that's going to create problems, and that's what we see today. So this Teoshvaya concept really works, and like I said, that also has to include societies that focus on skills, certain skills like somebody's good in this and all those that are, have that kind of talent they are raised together so that they encourage one another they help each other to develop each other's talent so it's a group effort and they, they give each other tips and stuff like that so that way they can really make a nice contribution to their society this is how it used to be and I think it was beautiful and it was that way for millions of years and then unfortunately America found us uncivilized <laughs> so we lost it too bad yeah. well we can bring it back it's up to us we need to be this way worldwide so that you feel for others too and not just your own people because when you just talk about your own people you're racist that's what it comes down to it's the fact is we have to think like our grandmother earth when she makha she sees us as her grandchildren and she doesn't give a shit what color your skin is or what language you speak what she's concerned about is how we live our lives because when we live healthy we nurture and come into communication with that piece of the earth that we all have inside of us. And that's what she's concerned about. Because that's the way she contacts you. That's how she speaks to you is through that piece. So if you live in a selfish and unhealthy way, you separate yourself from that piece. So if you're going around saying, well, see, that's the Washichu way, or us Indians, we need to, you know, and you're, you're just focusing on certain groups and you're keeping people separate. And the sad reality is we're not even separate. And But we're pushing us into separate cages. We're the ones that are fucking up. Everybody is not just one group of people because we're selfish. We are dualistic. It doesn't matter what skin color you are. When Indian people are saying, yeah, we have to get ready because one day the white man's going to destroy themselves and so we've got to be ready to take over when they're gone. This is not going to happen. Because if the white people disappear, so will we. So will everybody. Because we're all in this together. I heard a Lakota guy talk like this before. And that's stupid. Because that violates mitakwe oyasin. Mitakwe oyasin, this includes all people in the world, not just Indians. It includes everybody. So what happens to one happens to all. Today it's a lot of Indian racist, and I don't like seeing that. Because it's not the way, the way of our ancestors. When Indians are talking about the Indian way is better, <laughs> no it's not. Because today's Indian way is not the same as the ancient way. Today's Indian way is just the Christianized dualistic interpretation of a tiny remnant from the ancient way. And that's unhealthy. And this explains why a lot of Indians today are racist. And they use the word washichu as if it was a bad thing. Washichu is not a degrading term. So... When people talk like that, just go do something else. Get out of there, because that's a racist talking. When they see people as color of skin, they're not communicating from their sacred center. They're communicating from their skin color, which is superficial, which is separating from the earth at the same time when they do that, which means they're separating from themselves. 